now work on the serialization notebook. <clears throat> uh, okay, if you go to Knowledge Graph Demo, um, we have the serialization notebook in here. So in this notebook, we'll actually convert um, GMT files from immature to CSV files. And these files can then be ingested to the graph database. Um, so this includes several steps. So as I mentioned, we need ID and label. That's the basic need for um for the nodes, and then for the edges, we have or the links, we have um uh the source, the relationship, and the target. So first, we want to map and generate IDs for the terms. Second, we want to map genes to their entrance IDs, and then third, we want to create a CSV file. So I mentioned the CSV serialization. So here is the node. So we have like a node type that node the CSV, and the requirement is the ID and the label. The rest are optional metadata. And then here are the edge serialization. So we rely on the triple, and then the file type is source. Our file name is source dot relation dot target node type dot edge dot CSV. So you run this. So this one, this function, what it does is uh it just um downloads the file and if it already exists it will ignore it it will it will no longer download it just does like you know um making things easier for you so here we are just downloading um the mammalian homo sapiens um gene info file from andres so this is what we're going to use to uh, provide um to uh resolve like the ids of the genes so and here the, the next functions these are just me processing creating like a dictionary that we can use as a lookup for um for uh like the gene for yeah for, as a gene lookup for like the IDs. Mm -hmm. Let's wait for that to run a bit. Okay. There you go. So here you see if a gene doesn't exist, it will tell you none. But if it does exist, it will provide you with like this ID. Like for example, stat three, it gives you six seven seven four. And um just to make things easier for us for like the script what i did here is i created this get gene meta so what this function does is it does the lookup gets the gene id and if it's if it returns none it just doesn't return anything but if it returns a proper gene id it creates this metadata or this dictionary where it have the id then we have the label which is what we need for like our um the node file and then uh a URI. So this just this is just the link um to that um gene, I guess, on the Antra's gene uh, database. And um if you're doing something like this. So for example, this one, um we're using we're looking at cop B2 and the ID, we have the label, and then if you click on the URI, it it returns you to it goes to like um the cop B2 um uh gene gene page on NIH. Uh, gene database. And one other thing here is that I'm storing every, I'm storing everything into this uh into this library uh into this dictionary. So all genes gene uh all genes dictionary. So we're going to use it later where it, when we serialize um the genes uh the gene nodes so that um you know we don't have to create like separate gene nodes for like the different libraries. So uh, with that done we can we can also do like this for stat three. So you know, like those are just some examples. So now, let's start downloading GMT files from Enmature. So the following code downloads GMT from Enmature. So we also have like this exist function where it checks if it if we already downloaded it so that we don't have to re-download it. So serializing GMT files. So now we have everything we need. So let's try converting some Enmature libraries to csv files so before we start let's define first a dictionary to start okay we did that we already have like all this g metadata and then um let's try doing it for go biological process 2021 so i'm using 2021 here i think we already have 2023 in the website so if you want if you're trying to do this you can try 2023 instead uh you know just so have like a more updated one but here we just download we just put the library name Go Biological Plus 2021, and we try to download it. And let's print also the first um first uh first 
line of the genes of the GMT file. So which is the novo for sensational folding, um, go 0051084. So this is the gene set. So this is the label, and here are the associated genes of that gene set. And as I've shown you earlier, this is just kind of not showing on like the darker, darker background, I guess. But here's like go BP, but that's just like the relationship between now. Uh, this is what we're going, going to do, and this is the term, and then this are, it's connected to like the different genes. So now let's try serializing the nodes. For this, we have we'll create we'll define a gene set name resolver. What it does is that if we put uh, input a label, which is basically this one. If we input this, it will generate an ID and then a label. So for this one, for simplicity's sake, what I did is I just used um, UUID. So UUID is, um, what it does is that it creates like a unique UUID here um, based on the label that we are inputting. So what I mean with that is like, for example, this is your term. So this is your term. If you input it here so let's say this is the label and then um, it returns you like with this unique UUID so the good thing about UUID 5 is that you know it's kind of consistent uh, with like on the label that you inputted so if uh, you know like it gives you consistent result because there are like other types of UUID like UUID 4 that just returns you like a uh, random UUID so you cannot like recreate you know, there's no consistency with the ID. But the good thing about UUID 5 is uh, it's consistent and it's actually based on like your input label here. So that's why I opted using here. And if you want to go fancy, you know, if you, can, if you want to go fancy, if you want to do, if you know a little bit more coding, you can use a regular expression maybe to, ex to extract this one so that instead of UUID, you have this one as your, um, you have this one as your ID, so you can also do that. But for simplicity's sake, for this demo, I'm just using UUID5. <laughs> and yeah, so I'll show you this. And uh, I guess I should put term here. And uh, if so if I run this on gene set resolver, it will return you like this, this ID and then this the label, which is basically what we need for our um serialization. Now, let's try serializing the edge. So now we, ha we have a way to process the term in gene nodes. Let's start serializing the edges. So for the GMT file, we say that an edge exists if there is a, between a gene and a term, if the gene is part of the term's gene set. So for example, here, term one is connected with gene one, gene two, and gene three, and then term two is connected with gene two, gene four, and gene five. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate or like go, go over like the different lines of the GMT. So this is what we're doing here. And we are just, you know, we're splitting the line. Uh, so backslash t is just a tab. So and then um, so we we identified it the term and then the genes. So once we got well, once we separate the terms from the genes, we we first run the gene set name resolver. So this is what we did here. So we, we can resolve an ID and label for that term. After we resolve that. Uh, we now go, we now iterate or we now go over to like the genes that are connected with that term on this part and then resolve the gene metadata using this get gene meta that I showed earlier. So it will return you like the ID, the label, as well as the URI connected to like um, Antra's ID. And then from that, we can generate like the edge. So as I mentioned, we have like the triples, like the source, which is the term ID, and then the relation. Uh, which we will define as an input later, and then the target, uh, which is the gene ID, and then for you know as an additional metadata, I just add like the source label and the target label, and like additional edge properties if we have some. Uh, yeah. So and then we save this, um, save this file. It's a term df. So uh, the, so like this is a term node type that nodes the CSV. So we define this as an input later. And then um, we also save the edge that df. So this is like um a term node that um relation that gene that CSV, that edges that CSV. We'll save those files. So for example, here we, we define like the term node to be go biological process and then go BP is the relationship. And then for resource, like I said, no additional metadata, I just add like this genontology.org. And then uh, if you run iterate GMT, it will just run it across like the 6,000 genes and create um, this files. 
So this, so this files, these two files. <laughs> so the go biological process term, go BP gene CS, edge to CSV, and then this go biological process term that nodes the CSV. So if you open it, it looks something like this. So we have like an ID and then the label of that node. And then the edge DF is um this one. Uh, so we have the source, which is like your go biological process, go BP, and then the target, which is your gene ID. All right, so it's kind of straightforward. And if you want to play around with it, you can actually try doing it for an MGI mammalian phenotype. Uh, so this one uh, is a different one. So abdominal is just ambiguous. MT0011250, and then these are like the related nodes. It's kind of kind of the same, really. So if you want to try it, you can play around and create your own gene set name resolver for like M the MGI mammalian phenotype gene set library. And run, you can run it here. So next, <laughs> let's try a different example. So what if we want to find um up and drug up and up and down, <laughs> up and down regulate up and down regulated genes um from drug perturbation? So here we have information from links. <laughs> so what links does is that it has like these different cell lines and it um it treated that cell lines with like different um drugs with from different concentration different time points and then they measured uh, the gene expression of the cell lines and um so and then we furthermore what we did is we create like a consensus drug um enrichment uh drug um uh expression wherein we kind of combine all of those um cell lines and uh dosage and create like one uniform um uh gene expression matrix for like each drug so something that looks like this so for example like this is like a consensus for afatinib consensus for erlotinib that's uh neratinib and so forth and here are like the genes so we have like this matrix so here what i'm download what we're downloading here is just like i just since this is kind of a big file i just took like i just subsetted it to like the 5000 one for so that we can, you know we can go over it fast uh, oh, it's kind of slow to download, but you know, if you run that, it will finish in a bit. So wait for it, I think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you download that and you do this DFI lock, so this just, yeah, it's done. It, it, it will just return you like the top five um rows and columns. So it's how actually it looks like, of course, there are, there are like more drugs here, like 5,000 drugs here, and then we have also like the list of genes in here. So, Let's try like a different thing. Let's try getting that the top 100 upregulated genes. So to do that, um, what we do is for each drug, we sort the genes in descending order and then take the top 100 positive scoring genes. So for example, we start with afatinib. So we just sort it. Ascending is false. We see that the sorted is like this. So here are like the sorting. And then if we get like the top 100 um, um, genes, this is basically our gene set. We can we can save. So putting it all together, so we have something like this. So this is just like the top one hundred um uh genes from like the sorted one. And if you create, if you iterate across all the drugs in the columns of your data frame, um, you can actually do something similar to what we've been doing earlier with like the gene um or like the gene set name metadata function that we have earlier. So here I'm just generating UUID5 for that drug based on like the name of the drug. And then we just append like a drug and drug ID on like the drugs, you know, like the metadata for the drugs that we will convert later to, um, to a CSV file. And then here we just, I, I just iterate across all the genes, like of the top 100 genes. And then also generate like this get gene meta so that I can resolve like the IDs and um the ID and uh the URL for like that gene. And here we created like an edge, and I just added for fancy, you know, I just added like some score here, wherein this score is um, you know, like the this um score here that we have in here. So you can add that in an edge as an additional metadata and do edge append. So if you run that, it's not that slow. I think, yeah, it's not as slow. It should be done in a bit. 
Um, but yeah, if you run that, so it's it's kind of fast um, since it's just 5,000. And then we save it. So we have we, we can have like a drug.nodes.csv. And then we also have like an edge, the drug that links that upregulated gene that edge.csv. So we have like these two files. So as an exercise, it's kind of the same. I'm just flipping it. Try to do it for um the down regulated gene. But you know, if if you want to view how how it looks like, so here's your drug nodes when you have like an ID and then you have like a drug name and then um for the for the up regulated, so we have like your source, your relationship, uh the gene ID, a fat in there, the gene name, and then the specific score. So you have something that looks like that. So you can try if you want to play around with this, you can try creating like a code for like your down regulated genes. And then next we have the genes, the CSV. So using all genes, um, create uh genes that nodes the CSV file. So again, as we as I mentioned, while using this um get gene metadata, we're just putting everything on like this all genes uh dictionary so that it's easier. I'm just like using this uh, from records uh functionality from like the Spandas data frame. So that I can save all of our genes that we use uh, in this program. Uh, um, yeah, while we're solving. So here's how it looks like. And we have like an ID, a label, and then layer I. So once we have all of this, we can now do ingestion. Uh, so you have like a relatively empty um new 4 j database. So you can run direct um ingestion by um using this uh where is it? Import the CSV from SRC. So what we're going to what we're going to do is do um clear so we just do cd um src and then what i'm going what we're going to do is do python um ingest or rather what's the name import <laughs> import csv and then you just put the directory where you have uh that you want to import so for example dot dot slash notebooks slash csv i'm not going to do it because um, I already have something uh, ingested for a richer, but yeah, that's how that's how you're going to do it. Um, so you run that; it will take a bit, but it's not that slow. But you know, you can then you ingest everything in your um Neo4j database. So, if you have any questions? Just let me know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, this is the ingestion. So. But it's simple, as I mentioned, you just do Python import CSV and then the path of the directory. 